Blog Talk Radio. What's going on, folks? It's your boy, Long Beach Joe, and we are back at it, back at it, back at it again. Man, it is time to talk about this upcoming game that the New York Jets have against the New England Patriots. So much to discuss. We've got injuries. We've got game planning, so many adjustments that this team needs to make, and we're 0-1. You know, we got to find a way to get ourselves a W. A lot of questions about our defense as well, so we're going to go ahead and get into it. Listen, I'm the man of the people. I'm here for the people. Let me shamelessly promote my Facebook page. Everyone go on Facebook, search The Long Beach Joe Show. Like that page. My content's up there. Go ahead and give it a listen. Message me. I'll message you right back. I love going back and forth with folks about this football team. Also, leave me some feedback. I love hearing about what you folks think I do here on The Long Beach Joe Show. Listen, your boy is on iTunes, okay? Your boy's on iTunes. Go to your boy's iTunes and subscribe to the podcast if you have not already. It's the Long Beach Joe Show on iTunes. Go there, subscribe to the podcast on there, and also when you subscribe, hey, leave your boy some feedback. Salutes to everybody that does. I have, you know, people over there that that talk about the show, how much they like it, how much they enjoy it. I want to thank you all for that. But can we get more feedback, please? I want to hear more from people about this show, how, how you guys feel about it, what you like about it, all those things. And please give your boy a five-star rating if you can, okay? Like, you know, it's always greatly appreciated. Also, for those of you that are listening to me live on Blog Talk Radio, I also live stream the show as well on YouTube, okay? YouTube, Long Beach Joe Jets on YouTube. Again, Long Beach Joe Jets on YouTube. That is a YouTube channel where you can check out all of the live stream, the full show. You know, you can check out everything I do over there as well, the other content I put up. Also, when we watch games together, do them live game reactions, that's where we be at, you know. And the savages in the chat, that's why I call my chat the savages, because they're savage. They be over there too, you know, and we enjoy ourselves. We have a good time. We also game. We do a lot of stuff. So if you go to YouTube, Long Beach Joe Jets, Long Beach Joe Jets on YouTube, subscribe, turn on your notifications, give those videos a thumbs up. So, uh, you know, when you see the content, boom, it'll hit you. If you hit that uh, that notification bell, once the content drops, you'll be right in the know and you will be able to see it and come hang out with us or watch my videos or, you know, interact with me. So now it's time to talk about it, folks. It's time to get into it. we got to talk about this upcoming game the New York Jets have against New England Patriots. This is going to be quite a test, let me tell you. It is going to be quite a test. We're dealing with a lot. We're dealing with a lot. And there's a lot of questions. First, I'm going to start with the offensive side of the ball. This is going to be a big test for the New York Jets offensive line this week. Okay? We all know that there was big-time question marks last week about the, the offensive line, the lack of protection for Zach Wilson. We all had questions. Hey, you know, how are they going to rebound from this? We know we lost Beckton. Uh, he went down. We thought it was an ACL tear. We were thinking the worst because of the way he got rolled up on. Turns out it's just a dislocated kneecap so with that being said he went and got a second opinion he looks to be out four to eight weeks okay he went and got a second opinion and they're saying four to eight weeks so he's going to be gone so now with him gone what that does is shake up the rest of our offensive line it takes fan and it moves him over to the left side he's going to be our starting left tackle and now uh you know morgan moses is going to be our starting right tackle which is what we all kind of thought he should have been from the very beginning, (laughs) you know, to be completely honest, because Fant did not look very good on the right side, okay? We saw him get get schooled against the Panthers. So now with that shakeup along the offensive line, there's still questions about, hey, can this line get it together, pull together, jail, and protect Zach? Because if they cannot protect Zach, it is going to be a bloodbath, not just this game, but continuing on throughout the season. We, have, we play so many teams this year that have guys that can get after it. We just saw what the Panthers did to us with Burns and Hassan Riddick and, you know, Shaq Thompson at times, the pressure that they were able to bring. Well, guess what? The Patriots are coming this week with Hightower. Uh, Van Noy is going to be out because of a throat injury, so he's, gonna, he's been ruled out of the game. But they still got Junon. They still got Hightower. They still got Chase Winovich. They're going to be sending guys after us. If you don't think that the New England Patriots – Watch the game tape from the Panthers. If you don't think that they watched that and saw that the New York Jets offensive line struggled getting stunts blocked, figuring things out fast when they were sending rushers, there were guys that were literally coming from the Panthers' side untouched 
to take a shot at Zach Wilson. If you don't think that the Patriots watched that and picked up some things and said, okay, I'm ready to game plan, you're out of your mind. They're going to bring a lot of the same pressure, and then they're going to mix it in with some of the things that they do extremely well. You also got to look at the New York Jets running game as well. This is one of my big sticking points here this week yet again. This running game has to be on point. Last week against the, the Panthers, 45 yards total. I'm going to say it again, 45 yards total, total from this running back by committee. Ty Johnson, Kevin Coleman, Michael Carter, 45 yards total. That is unacceptable. That is unacceptable. You cannot run for 45 yards total against the New England Patriots and think you're really going to be in the game. You have to establish the ground game. We have to beat them up front. This offensive line has to open holes to give our running backs chances to make plays. You have to, because then we can work off of that. Everything else will make things much easier for Zach Wilson. This running game has to be on point, has to be much better than it was against the Panthers. Also, when we talk about the running backs as well, uh, we need to see more Ty Johnson and Carter. Look, Coleman, you know, all due respect, this is a guy's a veteran. Solid player, but he was looking a little little slow. Let's give the ball to Carter. Let's give the ball to Ty Johnson. Let's let these young guys go out there and really show they burst in their speed this week. Let's really feature those guys in the running game. Now, we're talking a little bit about Zach Wilson as well. You know, we mentioned the offensive line. We talk about how they need to protect him. Listen, this week is going to be a big challenge for Zach Wilson too. We all know Bill Belichick is like, you know, Arguably, to me, he's the greatest coach of all time, right? You look at all that he's done in this league. You look at his coaching staff, all the things that have been, you know, picked and poached and prodded from the way that they handle business. You look at all the, the success that he's had, all the wins, so on and so forth. Look, we're Jets fans through and through. And we hate their guts. But you've got to respect some of the things that he's done in this league. With that said, the New England Patriots, throughout his tenure, right, Throughout all the things that they've done, they've always been one of the most well-coached teams in the league, consistently. And you see that throughout all their players. Their players understand what their schemes are, how to run them, all those things. One thing that Belichick does consistently is he makes life extremely hard for young rookie quarterbacks. He makes them look like they don't even belong in the league. He makes young quarterbacks suffer we saw last season you know we played the Patriots we he had Sam out there seeing ghosts and Sam was just a young quarterback trying to find his way he had Sam out there seeing ghosts he keyed in on some things that was going on with the 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 lack of coaching on our side at the time when Gaze was here and he picked it apart he was so far ahead in the game plan that he kept running the same defensive play over and over and over and over again, and we had no answers for it. We must make sure that Zach Wilson is prepared for some of the things that we're going to see out there. We must make sure of that. Zach's got to get the ball out of his hands quickly, make decisions decisively, and get rolling. Holding on to the ball too long, make critical turnover, stuff like that, we just we don't want to see that out of Zach this week. We don't. And, and again, last week against the Panthers, even though we saw a lot of rush, even though we saw him getting hit quite a bit, he played very well. This was a guy that showed a lot of moxie, a lot of moxie and a lot of heart in a tough spot. He played extremely well for a guy that was dealing with all the things that he was dealing with. But this week is really going to be a test because you're going against, you know, a mastermind, a guy that understands how to get after players. He understands how to dissect players, especially quarterbacks, and figure out what you do well, what you don't do well, and then he tests you time and time again. Point as well. Because let me tell you something, this Patriots staff, as we all know, they're constantly making adjustments. So you've got to be prepared for that. And you've got to make your apt adjustments as well. Because if you do not adjust against the New England Patriots, you can call it a day. They're always top of the league and making adjustments in situational football. That is literally how they won Super Bowls over and over again. It's been constant adjustments and situational football. That's what's been going on with them. For years, they've been like that. You go on to the wide receiver position as well. Look, Corey Davis, I expect him to have a solid game. I hope that the 
The offense is going to feed him as well. There's some questions about uh, Crowder and Cole. According to Sulla, they're a game-time decision, so we'll see if they, you know, are actually going to play. Again, they're dealing with injuries too. I know Crowder just came back off of COVID, or off the, the reason we wear masks, but uh, now supposedly he's dealing with a groin injury. So we'll see if they play. Hopefully they do. But also when you look at this wide receiver position, you've got to look at this situation and say, hey, uh, Denzel Mims, are we going to see him this week? Is he going to be featured? There's been a lot to, to discuss about him. Sulla has come out and talked about how he may not know all of the, the assignments within his position. You know, for all three of the wide receivers, he may not know the routes that he needs to run. They've got to find some way to utilize this guy. You know, there's been offensive coordinators in the past that have been able to utilize great talent. Even if they weren't the brightest or the smartest, didn't know the playbook the best, they figured out a way to put those guys in positions to be successful on the field. And we've got to do the same. So we're going to be discussing that as well. I know that there's a lot of fans that are extremely uh, disappointed and discouraged with the lack of usage for Denzel Mims. So we'll see what happens with that going forward. Again, we're going to discuss that. 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639. Call in. We are taking callers. We'll get to everybody on the line in a second. The lines are hot. Last thing I want to discuss is this defense. This defense has got to get after it. It's got to get after it this week. Listen, the pass rush must be on point. It must be on point. John Franklin Myers, Huff, Quinnen Williams, Quinnen Williams, Quinnen Williams, Quinnen Williams, we need you to do something. We need disruption up front. You cannot allow – you cannot allow Mac Jones to sit back there for 30 years and have his day figuring out who he's going to throw the ball to. It's not possible. You have to get after this kid. You have to make life hard for him. Don't sit back and let him dissect things. Don't do that. We also have some injuries at linebacker as well. Sherwood looking like he's doubtful for the game. He's dealing with the injury. Cashman on IR again. We'll see when he gets back. That guy's always hurt, man. You're also looking at Joyner as well, the safety. He's going to be – he's done for the season. So we'll figure things out with him going forward, but he's finished. So now Redwine is going to be back there. This is a recipe for the New England Patriots to use that double tight end set and have success. We signed B.J. Goodson, just brought him into the building. He's a new linebacker. He's going to be playing with us here. This is a guy that's probably going to be utilized immediately. Those guys got to be ready. Those guys have got to be ready because they are going to throw Johnu Smith and Hunter Henry at us full blast, 100%. I expect Marcus May to be utilized in coverage as well. Red wine, our safety red wine, got lit up last, last week against the Panthers. Can't have that happening this week. You blow assignments, get blown by, get beat consistently, we're going to have a long day. I'm telling you, I can't. I, I'm, the, the New England Patriots are going to come out in that double tight end set, and they are going to test us over and over again. We have to be prepared for that. Our coaching staff has to be. So we're going to be tested. We're going to be tested. Again, 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. We're taking live callers. The New York Jets also signed Tom Morstead as well, a punter, longtime punter for the Saints. Just brought him in, so now Amendola won't be kicking and punting <laughs> like he was. I mean, he did a solid job against the Panthers, but, you know, he won't be kicking and punting this week. So we're going to get into this discussion. I'm going to take some callers. We're going to be talking about this game. There's so much to talk about, so many discussions. Injuries have definitely, you know, hurt and hindered us. But let me tell you something, the league's not going to cry for us. we got to get the next man up. And there's also players on this team that have got to perform, that have got to step up. So, again, 515-602-9639, 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. Salute to all the savages in the chat. I call my chat the savages. Why? Because they are savage, and they will get after you. It doesn't matter who you are. They're coming for you. So now I'm going to get to these lines. First caller that I'm going to, go to my guy, Angelo, man. Angelo, salutes to you. I want to thank you for calling in tonight. Angelo, give me your thoughts about this upcoming game, Jets, Patriots. What are your concerns with the New York Jets defensively? Do you think they'll be able to get after Mac Jones? 
That's a good question, man. And I think what I'm most concerned about is the coaching. I think we're going to get out coached in this game and rightfully so. I mean, that's, you know, that's okay. We all know that. We all know Bill Bill Belichick is a, is a genius. Now, um, like I said, they have some injuries. Like I said, our defense has a lot of injuries. So, you know, Mac Jones is one of those quarterbacks. He's kind of like, uh, you know, a younger Tom Brady, just kind of, you know, not really athletic, but just very accurate with the ball. And I, I think he's going to have a lot of completions, man. I don't, I don't know, man. I, I have a feeling that the Jets might keep it close, but ultimately when it comes down to it, we're going to get out coached. And, and like you said, man, Quentin Williams, I mean, you look back at our, our last two drafts, uh, Quentin Williams was selected, Ja'Kai Polite not on the team, you know, Ashton Davis hurt. Look at last year, Makai Beckton hurt. Uh, Zuniga's not on the team. Denzel Mims hasn't done anything. Cam Clark mm-hmm. hurt. You know, James Morgan not on the team. So it's like, we got a draft. You know, our only thing last year was Braden Mann and Bryce Hall are, are, are good pickups, but uh, – you can get it's, it's it's like a recipe that happened last year. It's the same thing. We had a, a couple of key injuries, and now we're trying to throw band aids on it, and it's not going to work, man. And especially not against the Patriots. But we'll see yeah. how Car- Carolina looks against the Saints. Maybe Carolina's for real. I mean, Christian McCaffrey tore us up, and, and like I said, mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with that, right? He's the best running back in the game. He's supposed to really. You know, and, and Donald looked pretty good. He had Robbie Anderson. He had the receivers working. We're still a young team. So I want to see how good Carolina is against the Saints this week. That's going to kind of determine, all right, maybe Carolina is for real. You know, maybe we just lost to a good team. And, you know, the Patriots seem like they're for real. So if we lose this game, hey, we lost to two good teams. We're not a, we're not a good team yet, man. We're still young. We're still learning. So we all knew this year was going to be, you know, just kind of uh, see how it goes. We weren't expecting too much, but we want to see them compete, right? And guess what? They competed last week in the second half. I mean, you see signs that there is there. The defense, I mean, you saw Michael Carter go in there breaking up a pass. You saw Eccles. For, I don't know who Redwine is. This is the first time I heard it. I saw him, I saw him on the field. I'm like, who the heck is this guy? So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah we, get, we, got, we, got, we got too many Band-Aids on there that, that I don't think yeah. we're going to be able to pull out a W, man. Yeah, and, you know, and again, Angela, I want to thank you for calling in. You're bringing the heat early. Look, I hear you. At, at the end of the day, yes, we're a young team, but my questions are, you know, like you said as well, we played great in the second half, but first half, we, if you know, to continue to build that momentum to become a good team, you got to be able to play complete football games, right? You can't come in flat, especially against you know teams like the Panthers or any other team, honestly, that we're going to be out there competing against. You got to come out hot. So that's what I want to see in this game, also as well. I want to see this New York Jets football team come out rolling, get going early, get started fast. That was one of my keys to the game, you know, that we're going to continue to talk about for the rest of the show. We've got to come out hot. We've got to start fast because if you don't start fast, you're going to have some issues, especially, again, like you said as well, when we're a young team still trying to find our way and we're not talented at certain spots that we need. And that's going to be my next question for you, Angela. You you talked about – I'm sorry, you, you talked a little bit about some of the issues that we have defensively. You talked about our, our safety, red wine. We're going to see him this week uh, because he's a guy that's going to be starting back there. Also, we have some injuries at linebacker with Sherwood going down, Cashman going down. So I'm looking at it now, and I'm saying, hey, these double tight ends that John M. Smith, Hunter Henry, they're going to be coming at us full speed. That's what I expect. Do you expect the Patriots to do the same? Yeah, and, and you know what? To start fast, guess what? You need to run the ball. That's how Carolina started fast last week, right? You saw the yeah. Caffey first down. He gets eight eight yards. What do we get? Yeah. Negative one yard. One yard. Like you can't start fast if you can't run the ball. And Tevin Coleman's yeah. not fast. I mean, well, that that's that, you know if you can run that ball on first down and get five yards, man, you're moving. You got momentum. We had no momentum on first down. No momentum on second down. We're in third and long situation. We cannot start fast without a running game and without an offensive line. We wasted all yep. the dang draft pick the last couple of years on James Morgan and Chuma and Doga and it's just like Ja'Kai Polite, Jabari Zuniga, draft an offensive line. You know, get some young offensive lines in there. And you can see how important yep. that is. And, uh, man, yeah, like I said, <laughs> I didn't even know Cashman was down too. But, you know, I think C.J. Mosley, he's the leader, right? He's going to have to step up. He's going to have to pull the linebackers, the defensive back, the whole defense together. I, I trust in T.J. Mosley. He did look good. So I feel like he's got to use his brain and his talent 
to recognize what's going on and communicate with the rookies and the other young players and the new players like, hey, Hunter Henry's over here, watch the quick slant, you know. Um, Johnny Smith is over here, watch the out over there. You know what I'm saying? Like he's going to – keep. dude, we're, we're putting a lot on his shoulders. And I think if, yeah. if you get C.J. Mosley in there running that defense, you know, we might be okay because everybody's athletic. Everybody can play football. It's the speed of the game, right? The, the, the guys that don't get in there a lot, they, they, can't, they can't catch up. They can't see what the offense is doing. They can't – they don't know what – you know, C.J. Mosley looks at that. They line up, okay, this is what they're going to do. This is, so, C.J. Mosley, if, if he has a good game and he can be a leader, Marcus May back there. So, we got the leaders, right? If they can communicate, and they, you know, we have athletes. So – it's all, it's all it's all coaching game. That's what I'm saying. I think we're gonna get out coached. Bill Belichick knows if we line up like this, they're gonna think we're gonna do this. But guess what? We're gonna do this. You know. So I think we might get out coached, and 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 not you know credit to the players, whoever's out there. We're, we're probably just gonna get out coached, man. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. It's okay. We're in a rebuilding year. So yes, yeah. I expect the Patriots to have a good game, but I expect a couple mistakes. And if we can capitalize on those mistakes, that's how every game goes. We can keep it close. I think the spread is like six points. I'll take the Jets to cover that. I think they're at home. And that's the other thing. Okay. There might be a couple butterflies. There might be a couple butterflies, you know. Playing at home is not always, you know, for the Jets. hasn't always been a uh, a strength for us. I, I feel like playing at home, sometimes these guys don't they, – they probably play a little bit more nervous. But hopefully, like I said, playing at home will help out. Uh, the coaches can step up. Uh, C.J. Mosley, the leaders can step up. Um, and that's the thing. We really don't have a leader – on the offensive line, right? Usually it was that Nick Mangold. We don't have mm-hmm. that. We need that, you know, that leader on the offensive line. And Makai Beckton wasn't he? You can see he had a little, little bit of trouble this year, starting in training camp. And I don't know. I just um, – I, I don't see a leader. I don't see a leader in the backfield. You know, I, I see a leader at quarterback, though. I, I, see a, mm-hmm. I see a gunslinger back there. And if we can just yeah. kind of – and I, you know, going in, I thought the offense was going to be – Kind of, you know, well, obviously we, we thought the defense at first because we had all these additions and everything, but I kind of thought the offense was going to be carrying this team. And now, like, like I said, with that, I thought we were going to have a running game. I thought we were going to have, the, I thought, you know, Elijah Moore was going to be a playmaker. I thought Denzel Mims was going to come in, you know. So obviously, we, yeah. I, I think I, I called you a couple months ago and I told you about Denzel Mims. You guys were all like, oh, he's going to be our number two. I'm like, whoa, 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 hold on a second. You know, let's all slow down on that. Now you see why. Now you see it. You know, Denzel Mims, maybe he's going to take a little bit longer. But, like, again, he had, a, he had one play. He had a flash of a play, right? So maybe there is talent there that we got to utilize. So let's, let's get him on the field and see what he's got. Like, come that, on. That, but, and, that, and, that's, and that's the point, though, Angelo, is that if you're not putting this guy on the field and you're not out, let, allowing him to go out there and show what he's got, then when are we ever going to see him? at this point, right? We saw him in an offense last year with an offensive coordinator that was horrific. Adam Gaze was terrible, but he was still able to go out there and make plays. If he's utilized properly, I believe Denzel Mims is a good wide receiver. You cannot tell me that Jeff Smith is better than Denzel Mims. He's out there getting snaps and catches before Mims. Are we saying that Berrios is a better wide receiver than Denzel Mims? Because if we're saying that, then that means that Joe Douglas drafted a fifth or sixth string wide receiver in the second round. I'm sorry, but somebody's got to be held accountable for that. Somebody does. You know, and we, again, we so I, I believe I, I was listening to, uh, I believe it was Shannon Sharp. He was talking about how his love for Gary Kubiak was so thick because Gary Kubiak used to, he used to literally put him out on the field. He knew that he didn't really know what he was doing. He was a young tight end. Kubiak was trying to, you know, figure out how to utilize the guy. He would literally, Kubiak, Kubiak would tell him before he went out on the field what his route was that he needed to run. And he would go out there and run it, and he became successful. And Kubiak just continued to coach him throughout, you know, the rest of his the, the rest of the time that he had with him, and made him a better tight end. That's one of the things that you talked about. So my my question starts to be, well, if Mims is struggling on figure out what route to run, why can't somebody just tell him what route to run? <laughs> I, I just I, I don't know. Yeah, I man. don't understand like what is going on. So listen, I gotta get back Something's to the lines. On the so yeah, it's it's something. It's something. Yeah. We'll we'll, uh, we'll figure it out. So we'll, before I let you go, though, let me get your final score prediction. Give me your final score prediction for this upcoming game against the Patriots. Oh, that's a good question, man. I feel like um, no. Uh, let's see, New England. Oh man, I'll say New England twenty-eight. That's that's standing out to me. Let's say the Jets mm-hmm. maybe uh, twenty-four. Twenty-eight to twenty-four, Jets lose. 
Oh, 28 to 24. Jets lose. Ah. That's tough. But to lose to you, Angelo, I respect you. Listen, you brought the heat today, all right? Next time I have a show, I want to hear from you, my friend. You have yourself a good one, all right? All right, man. Take it easy. All right. Listen, Angelo calling in with the heat. He called in with the heat early. He knows his stuff. So we're going to keep getting to these lines. Again, 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. When you call in, please be patient. The lines are hot. We're going to get to everybody. We respect everyone's time. Salute to all the savages in the chat as well. We'll be coming to you soon. I know folks have questions in there, and we're going to get to it. So next caller, I'm going to 347. 347, I'm coming directly to you. 347, you look like a new caller. Give me your name, where you're from, and give me your thoughts on this Jets' upcoming game against the Patriots. What's up, Joe? You there? What's going on? Yeah, I'm here. What's going on, my friend? Uh, my name D. Jinx. I'm from the Bronx, man. Die hard okay. Jets Talk fan. To Talk to me. Talk to me. Now, hold on. Hold on. Hey. <laughs> Talk to me. I got some homies in the Bronx. Talk to me. Give me your thoughts about this upcoming game, and what are your expectations of Zach Wilson? Um, I think Zach's going to be fine. I think he's going to be fine, but I think the offensive line is going to wear down. And, Lord, if they don't get Greg Van Rotten up out of there... <laughs> Man, I don't know he what is bad. Watching. I don't yeah. know what they're watching. I don't know what they're yeah. watching. Him and the center give no push whatsoever. Yeah. None. Yeah. Yeah. And especially now with uh, with Beckton going down, now you got even more shake up along the offensive line because you're moving Fant to the left side. Morgan Moses is starting the right side. Fant struggled at uh, at, at at tackle. Last week, now you got to wonder, hey, is he going to struggle on the left side as well? Because everybody's acting like Fent has always been a starting left tackle. There was a time when he was a wing tackle, dude. When he was in Seattle, he struggled to beat guys out that really were not that good at tackle. So you got to wonder, man, you know, hey, what? is he going to be up this week? Uh, you know what? Um, he was on skates last week. I don't know what the, if the coaches were smoking some. Did they catch Morgan Moses smoking before the game or something? <laughs> And that's why they didn't have him in? Because I don't understand it. I don't, I don't understand it either. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, understand I don't know it. why. I, I don't know why uh, he was starting over Morgan Moses. I don't get it either. But my next question for you, my friend, is when you look at us defensively, man, how important is it for us to get some pass rush on this New England Patriots, uh, you know, offensive uh, team? How important is it for us to get in Mac Jones' face? It's real, it's real important, Joe. Uh, I heard the right tackle might be out, which is definitely a plus. Yeah. Definitely yeah. a plus. Yes. We need Rankins. We need Rankins to really step up this week because I haven't yeah. seen nothing out of him. And it's just yeah. all preseason, the same thing happening. We couldn't stop the run against no team we played, and we couldn't stop him from passing. No. no. I thought at least the yeah. run would be stopped up, but that ain't happening. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a big question going forward. Listen, it's been amazing talking to you. Before I let you go, give me your final score prediction for this upcoming game, man. What do you think is What do you think the score is going to be? <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, uh, you know what? I'm a, I'm gonna be the homer. I, I'm, I'm gonna be positive with this one. I think twenty four twenty one. I think we're gonna pull this thing off. Oh, I think we're gonna pull this thing off. Don't pull this off, twenty four, twenty one. I think I we're gonna pull this off. Mm-hmm. I think Elijah. I think Elijah Moore will go off. Will he will go off this weekend? He will go off. Yeah, he will okay. go off. Okay. Look. Look, I respect it. Listen, I want to thank you for calling in, my friend. It was great to speak to you. Next time I have a show, I want to hear from you. All right. You have yourself a good one. No doubt. I got you. All right. You have a good one. Listen, D call in. We're going to keep getting to these lines again. 515 602 9639. 515 602 9639. Call in. We are taking live callers. Please be patient when you call in. The lines are hot. Also, I know I have 
new listeners, you know, new callers. Listen, when you call in, you know, please don't call in and hang up. Call in and hang up. I can see you. You know what I'm saying? Just call in. Wait your time in line. We'll get to everybody. Also, when you call in, the only thing I do not let on this show is cursing. Don't curse, all right? You curse on my show, I'll get you out of here fast. Fast when we got Adam Gaze. Get out of here, Adam Gaze. We got him out of here so fast, and then we have moved on. We've moved on. So we're going to get back to these lines again. 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639. Call in. Next, I'm going to my guy CT, man. CT salutes. I got to talk to you. CT, what's going on, my man? I want to thank you for calling in tonight. Listen, up, CT, yo? this Jets offense, what's going on? This Jets offense, man, I'm concerned. I'm very, very concerned going into this week. <laughs> what are your thoughts about this offensive line? Do you think they hold up under this Patriots pass rush? It's a great question, man. I think everybody's uh, – and um, you know how Jets fans are. We're all crazy. You know, it's, um, mm-hmm. it's been one game. You know, it's been one game, and um, – I think the perspective I have on it, at least, I know everybody has their opinion, but my perspective is, come on, like guys, guys, give it, give it, give it some time. Like we literally have a 17 games season. We've had one game with one, a new regime, a new coach, new offensive coordinator, new defensive coordinator, um, a lot of first year, second year guys. This is not built overnight, you know. It would have been great if they went out there and smacked Carolina. Um, and so showing that they have the chemistry off the bat, but that's unlikely considering all the new pieces with it. Now, granted, I, I know what you're saying, like the offensive line was struggled, and that I think there is cause for concern, honestly, especially with Beckman going down. I, I, I do believe there is cause for concern. But, um, you know, this is the NFL. People go down and people, you know, uh, have to step in and, and handle their job. So I feel like the offensive line I think is very well – known to be our weakness right now. Unfortunately, that was what we expected to be one of our strengths with all the, you know, changes we had on the line and added a couple of pieces, you know. So um, it's sad, you know, it's, it's disheartening. But what I say about that is when it comes to offensive line, lines, it does take time to gel. So let's give them the chance, you know, this season to do that. Last year it didn't happen. You've got to give these guys this new, this new squad a chance with a new, with new regime. I think they came out in the second half and they did a little bit better last, um, in that game. So hopefully they can take some lessons from that game and, and um, just, give, just I mean, give uh, Zach a little bit of time. I'm not saying that Zach won't get sacked again because I think it's likely that he will. But I do believe that uh, if you give him a little bit more time, we can pull this thing out maybe. Yeah. No, look, and, and I hear you. And a lot of people are saying the same thing that, you know, patience. And I'm, I'm a guy that preaches patience as well. But I tell you what, some of the shots that Zach Wilson was taking in that last Carolina Panthers game was insane, right, CT? I like, see. we saw him literally take a shot where his head bounced off the field, and I didn't think he was going to get up. I thought he was concussed, to be completely yeah, honest. I, I thought he had a concussion. <laughs> but, uh, but even – You know, people, this, people right I, now, they want – they want instinct. Yeah, he, he, I, he, I, and I don't want him to get hurt. Instinct. I absolutely don't want yeah. him to get hurt. We don't want that. But I also think that the fan base wants instant gratification. And I get it. Yeah. You know, we want to see who's going to be the leader on the team. We want to see what the mm-hmm. draft class pan out and all that stuff. But guess what? That is shown in not one game. It's shown over the course of a season. And we can't just yeah. say that we can throw out, throw out our draft class because, you know, they didn't perform in one game. We can't say, okay, we don't have any leaders on the team if if it's one game. You know, I think that stuff is built over time, you know. And we'll have that. But you got to understand, literally most of the pieces on this entire regime is new. Like, so – I'm not going to make any excuses for the offensive line because you're right. We don't want our Zach going out because if he goes out, we might as well kiss the season goodbye. Um, yeah. But uh, so, so you know, but hopefully we can get that patched up. Uh, there were some struggles with that I heard in, during the off season too. So it doesn't look good, but we'll see. Yeah. But especially when you look at, again, uh, now the offensive line is being shaken up even more because Beckton is out. We're going to, we, you know, we're losing him for four to eight weeks. So now you got Fant on the left side. You got Morgan Moses back, you know, on the right side where he should have started from the very beginning. So there's more shakeup. So again, they, they need more time to gel. I, I respect that, but there's some things that they were missing where guys were just coming out completely unblocked, and Zach was taking shots. You cannot allow that this week, especially with again a, another set of pass rushers that they're going to be bringing at us: High Tower, Judon, you know, Winovich, those guys. Of course, the noise out, but. Let me tell you something. We've got to make sure that guys get blocked. Another thing that I think is the issue as well 
And something that we were all excited about was the running game. The running game wasn't very effective against the Panthers. Do you think we'll be able to open up holes and get the rolling running game rolling early against the Patriots? It's it's honestly vital, at the, you know, and and the que- I can't answer that question because right now, being completely honest with you, Joe, yes, like I said, the offensive line is a concern. I don't know mm-hmm. if we have the guys. I don't. I, at this point, I don't know if we have the guys to protect Zach. I don't know if we have the guys to get, you know, holes open for the running game. I don't know. So um, the, the what I would say is we'll find out over the course of the season if but that's the main thing on this team that I see as an issue. But there's, there, there were a lot of positives other in, in the game outside of that. However, that one piece, if we can't solve that, then it's going to be a problem all season. Yeah, it sure is. It sure is. What are your expectations out of Elijah Moore in this game? Ah, good question, man. So my boy Elijah Moore, man, I, I expect him to, you know, go out there, get at least, you know, 60, 70 yards. And uh, maybe one big play, you know, even if it's like a 20-yard pass, I'm going to take it. You know, like, I I think Elijah has a lot of skill. Um, It doesn't always have to be home run shots, but, you know, as the season goes along, I know they're going to find a spot for him on this team. So I know we're all excited, but this is, you know, our quarterback room is completely coming into this game full. It's not going to be just Mm -hmm. Elijah Moore. It's not going to be just Corey Davis. they got Keelan Cole now, James Crowder coming back. I I believe that this is going to give our offense some rhythm. I think that's what we lack last week is getting it into a rhythm. If if Zach can get into a rhythm into the, in the first half, then we have a shot to win this. He, and Zach just needs to get into that rhythm and uh, you know, and then we're good. I, I think that we have a shot. But I do think that both both teams are gonna run. So I think it will be a low scoring game overall. Mm-hmm. But uh I'm looking for all, all our wide receivers getting off, hopefully. Yeah, I'm hoping, you know, we gotta start fast. We gotta get rolling early. We cannot come out flat like we did against the Panthers and think we'll still be in the game against the Patriots because once they get up, they shut the door on teams. Historically, that's what they do. Yeah. When they get a lead, they carry it and take it all the way home. So before I let you go, CT, yeah. give me your final score prediction for this game, man. Who do you think wins? Who do you think loses? What do you think the score is going to be, man? I mean, I'm going to come on this show and probably say the Jets every week, but I'm, I'm going to say Jets <laughs> this week, 17. <laughs> Because I'm, 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 I'm riding my guys, and I'm never going to speak oh, ill into right. existence. Go ahead. But, go ahead. But, um, go you. Yeah, I'm going to go I'm gonna go 17 go 14. I'm going to say it's going to okay. be hard. Don't get me wrong. Like, when I okay. did my own, like, you know, scoreboard and shit, like, I'm oh, sorry, excuse me, but for the week, watch, watch for the year. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I know. Ahead. Uh, for, the, for the year, um, I think I had them losing this game. But on this show, oh. I'm going to say yes, we're going to win 17 14. 17-14. CT said he's going to take the Jets every week. So listen, salute to you, CT. I want to thank you for calling in, man. Next time I have a show, I want to. All right, you have Broke a good one. Great show, man. Take care, man. Have a good week. weekend. Listen, CT come in. He bring his fire. He said he ain't never going to. He ain't never going to speak, you know, the, the, well, how he feel. He's going to take the Jets every single week, no matter what happens. I respect that. I respect that. Listen, 515-602-9639, 515-602-9639. Call in. We are taking all callers. We are talking Jets. Next, I'm going to my guy, Jacob, man. Jacob, I got to talk to you. Jacob, 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 you know your Jets. Salute to you. I want to thank you for calling in. Jacob, give me your thoughts about this upcoming game against the New England Patriots. Are you concerned that we'll see Sulla get out coached in this game? Hey, what's going on, Joe? I appreciate all the shout-outs again at the beginning. I really do. Um, yep. And, you know, for a coaching standpoint, of course, we all know how good of a coach Bill Belichick is. As much as I dislike him because he's a clown, he's he's arguably the best coach of all time. And yep. coming in with a completely new coaching staff, that's definitely one of the biggest concerns for us is that we're going to get out-coached. Because I can probably tell you about – 80 to 85% of the time against the Panthers, just by the way we were lined up in the situation, before the play even happened, I called out if it was going to be a run or a pass. And I was correct yeah. about 80% of the time. So if yeah. that happened against a second-year head coach, imagine what it's going to be like with a veteran, one of the best head coaches of all time. And we just kept mm-hmm. putting ourselves into these horrible situations where we just we feel the need to have to run it every time on first and ten 
and then it goes nowhere because the offensive line doesn't know what they're doing, and then we got to pass it because we're behind, and then that's incomplete, and then we got to pass it again, and then we punt. So mm-hmm. I think they know exactly what we're going to be doing. So I think we really need to come up with some way to change it up and, you know, do things that the Patriots don't see as much or that they're historically not as great at defending against. Um, yeah. Whoever looks into that should look into that. I don't know who it is. Uh, but I think, you know, the coaching is probably the biggest concern for me, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, look, I hear you. I, I'm right there with you. I'm looking at the situation as, like, things have kind of got to switch up. Some of the things you saw in that Panther game, particularly with the motions, uh, getting flags as well early, the, you know, the, uh, the the offside stuff that we were getting, some of the other flags or the false starts uh, flags that we were getting offensively really hurt us too, and that pushed us back as well. We've got to clean those things up. Unnecessary penalties against the Patriots will get you a loss, okay? They take advantage of that as well. So we've got to kind of clean that stuff up offensively as well. But another thing that people are concerned about or worried about, and like you said as well, you want to utilize all the weapons that you can offensively at the Patriots. Make them defend things. Go after them, attack them. A lot of people are concerned, hey, we got this guy, Denzel Mims. We're not using him at all. He's not being used effectively. You got Barry Oak out snapping him. You got Jeff Smith, you know, getting catches and things before him. And then there's just a lot of, a lot of commercial about, hey, when are we going to see this guy on the field consistently? What's your thoughts on this situation with him? Yeah, by the way, there is one thing I want to add at the end of the show, like I like to do sometimes, but we'll talk about that in a later. Um, after, but, yeah, for Denzel Mims, I think – I he's one of my favorite players on the team. And, like, right when we drafted him, I saw his potential, and I thought he could really be a star in this league. Like, he, from the way he plays and everything, he's just – he's really, really underrated to me. And you got to remember, he's a six foot three receiver who runs a 4'3", 40-yard dash. Yeah. And we can't seem to utilize him. How is that possible? Because usually when you have people who are speedsters like that, oh, it's because they're, you know, they're not as tall, so you don't like them in the red zone. Or if you have people who are six three, six four, oh, they're not as fast. So, you know, on third and long, we want some speedsters who can take up yards. But he's both. Mm-hmm. He's six foot three, and he runs that 40-yard dash in 4.3, 4 seconds or whatever it is. And I get mm-hmm. maybe he had a couple drops during training camp or whatever, but we've got to find a way to utilize him in some way. Because I remember last year when Joe Flacco was the quarterback because Sam Darnold, of course, wasn't healthy, he would – test Denzel Mims and throw him the ball in one-on-one coverage. And almost every time Denzel Mims was coming down to this, every time he was making highlight plays out there. That's what he's known for being a great deep ball threat who can moss people when you put him one-on-one. So Mm -hmm. I just don't see how we're not able to make it work with him because he's every time he's out on the field, he shows his potential. And then we just try to find a reason why we're not putting him out there. So I'm a huge believer in him. And I think we really got to find a way to use him. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I don't know what's going on. Again, there's been a lot of talk. Uh, you know, Coach Sola kind of came out and kind of softly said that, you know, Mims maybe doesn't have all the routes, you know, that, that all three or all the positions, uh, you know, that he's going to be out when he switched around. He may not have the knowledge of the route that he needs to run. And I'm just like, hey, man, if he doesn't, can somebody just tell him what route to run? Or is there some way that you can exactly. put him out there? Utilize them in other way. I just I just don't understand because we've seen that with other teams. There's other offensive coordinators that have come out or players that have come out and said, "Hey, listen, you know, in my first couple of years I was struggling." An offensive coordinator came to me and would say, "Hey, this is going to be the system. You're going to run this. I'm calling this in the huddle. You're running this. You're running that." Until I started to kind of pick it up a little bit more. So, I mean, we got to figure out, especially again with Crowder and Keelan Cole looking like you know they're a game time decision. If neither one of those guys play again, we're back in the same situation. You know, with Corey Davis out there, Barrios out there, hey, we could we could use another weapon that's lethal, like you said as well. And especially when we talk about this being his big year. Everybody was saying before the year started that this was going to be his breakout year. Well, to have that breakout year, he's got to be on the field. Because if he's not, then I don't know where else he's breaking out on the bench. You know what I'm saying? So I want to go yeah. to the defensive side of the ball with you, man, because this is it's, it's crazy. It's, it's absolutely crazy. Going to the defensive side of the ball, you look at our linebacker situation, a lot of injuries. We got B.J. Goodson in the building now. How concerned are you about these Patriots running backs coming out the backfield and catching the football on us, just like we saw, you know, with CMC? 
Uh, it's definitely a concern, but I don't think it's nearly as much of a concern as it was last week because obviously everyone knows what Christian McCaffrey can do. He's virtually unstoppable uh, with his yeah. athletic ability, you know, vision, juking moves, everything. It's almost yeah. impossible to really shut him down. Uh, but we come here with Damian Harris, who isn't really known for being a receiving back as much. That's more James White. So I think we're going to see him a lot more on third down. Um, and I think these linebackers should be able to do an okay job. Uh, we brought in DJ Goodson, who I don't know too much about, but I know he's a tackle guy, likes to rack up the tackles, which is always nice to have. And then we really need CJ Mosley to control this defense because, you know, obviously when we go back to that week one of 2019, for the three quarters that he was in, the Bills did not score once. He was yeah. all over the place, knew exactly how to defend every single play, and you can see why we gave him $85 million because he was really a field general out there. And he, you know, he looked like it. And yeah. we really need that again from him, especially when we're going against this incredible coaching staff, uh, as much as I hate to admit it. When we're going against this incredible coaching staff, you need these veteran guys who are pro bowlers, all pros, have experience against good teams. You need them to really lead the rookies. And if he's yeah. able to do that, I think we really should be able to shut down the run game at least a little bit because our interior defensive line is very, very good. Even if they didn't get, you know, a sack or two each, uh, they actually did have a lot of pressure. So I think yeah. if we put all that together, we should be in for a successful day in stopping the run. Yeah, listen, absolutely, Jacob. Listen, before I let you go, go ahead and give me your final score prediction. And I know that there's a little something you want to say. If you could quickly do that, let's get into it. Yeah. I would say I really do think we can pull out this victory. I think we just really need to, in some way, shape, or form, outsmart the Patriots. I know that's tough to do. But, Mm -hmm. again, the receivers that they have are very, very iffy to me because, they, in my opinion, they heavily overpaid Nelson Aguilar. He's been known for just dropping everything. People make jokes he can't even catch coronavirus, you know. But they decided to give him $14 million a season. Yep, yep. Uh, I'm not Jacoby Myers. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Obviously, the tight ends are a bit concerning, but um, I do think we can really pull out this victory. And I think I'm going to give us a 20 to 17 win because I don't think there's going to be too much scoring. But I really do think it's possible. Okay, 20 to 17. <laughs> Look, Jacob, I respect that. I respect that take. I really like it. Listen, I got to get back to these lines, man. I got to get back to these lines. These lines are hot. I want to thank you for calling in, my friend. You have yourself a good night. All right, you too. All right. Listen, Jacob calling in with fire. We're going to keep getting to these lines. Again, 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639. Call in. We are taking all callers. Please, when you call in, be patient. We'll get to everybody. The lines are hot tonight. Also, when you call in, please do not curse on my show. I know I have a lot of new new listeners, new callers. Don't curse on my show. I'll get you out of here fast. I'm talking fast. Fast when we got Jamal. Get up out of here, Jamal. Woo! One of the best trades we've ever made. Salutes. Also, for those of you that are watching, wherever you're watching me from, please give the stream a like. Also, uh, subscribe to the stream if you have not as well. Please turn on your notifications when you subscribe to the stream on YouTube so that when I post content, you folks will get to know. Get the know. And also, please, again, please give the stream a like. You know, hit a thumbs up if you could, please. It's greatly appreciated. So next, we're going to keep getting to these lines. Again, 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639. Call in. We're taking all callers. Next, I'm going to my guy, Brandon. Brandon, I'm coming directly to you. Brandon, so we hey. to thank you for calling this tonight. What's going on, bro? Listen, we got Jets, Patriots. You already know what time it is. Give me your thoughts about this matchup that we have here, especially offensively. What are your expectations of Zach Wilson in this upcoming game? What's going on, Joe? What's going on, Jets family? Um, I expect – it was our first game last week. So, you know, first-time play caller, first-time quarterback, first-time the offensive line played together. So it was a little shaky. I think this week, now that Morgan Moses is back on at right tackle where he should have started at, I still don't know how he beat out George Fant. Still have no clue about that. 
<laughs> but I think we may get a little bit of glimpse of the run game. Mm-hmm. Uh, Greg, Greg Van Rotten. <laughs> oh boy, I don't know about that guy. Uh-huh. Hopefully, he's gone next year. So, so when you talk about when you talk about the run game, though, Brandon, my issues with the run game was, hey, look, I, I understand Tevin Coleman. This guy's a solid veteran, but I want to see some of the young guys in there. I felt like Ty Johnson, you know, Carter, they showed a lot of burst. You know, even P. Ryan, who I think is actually going to be playing this week as well. Don't you want to see those young guys in there more than you uh, see uh, Owen uh, in there? A hundred percent. A hundred percent I want to see them in there more with – in there in more than uh, Tevin Coleman. Ty Johnson had a longest run on last Sunday. He had a longest run. And guess who he ran behind? Morgan Moses to the right. That was our yeah. longest run of the game. Why? Yeah. I don't I, I don't know why they have Tevin Coleman in the game. They say maybe it's for blocking or whatever like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I think he needs to have like 10% of the snaps and let the young boys eat. That's a fact. That's a fact. Speaking of young guys going out there putting in the work, what are your expectations of Elijah Moore in this game? Because he's coming off some big drops in the last game. People started to really get on him. What do you expect out of him against in this game against the Patriots, man? I, I think they're going to feature him a lot. LaFleur said it as much in his uh, interview. So he kind of tipped his hand saying, you know, I, I think he's going to have a big game. So I think they're going to feature him a lot. I think it's going to be – if we can't get the run game going, I think it's going to be a lot of bubble screens that allow you more to manufacture the run game. Maybe it'll take a deep shot or two to him. Um, but what I'm concerned is if I see my boy Denzel Mims with a track suit on. That's what I'm concerned about. <laughs> uh, <laughs> If, if if I wake up, if I wake up and I see come, come across a ticker, Denzel Mims is a healthy scratch. I'm I, I'm gonna have a problem. Now you know, gonna be I, I, I try to I try to rationalize it. Next you know, to you watching the game, what they right? say. He's about to be sitting next to you on the couch watching the game with you. Yeah. <laughs> People had uh, jo- a, a Nike jogging pants on it and uh, <laughs> flip flops. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you know. know, they, we, you we, know we, I try to rationalize it, Joe, and I try to say, yeah. well, maybe it's a good thing because we got so, so much talent in the wide receiver group. I even try to look at it like that, but it still didn't no. sound right to me. It still didn't sound no, right it, to me. It, Here's why it doesn't sound right, Brandon, is because he was supposed to be a, a big part of that talented wide receiver group, right? In the offseason, everybody was saying, hey, this is one of the most uh, – and it wasn't just Jets fans. It was a lot of people around the league saying, hey, this is one of the most diverse wide receiver groups uh-huh. in the league. This looks like a wide receiver group that's going to be extremely strong. Please stop me when I start telling lies, right? Was, was not he not the lies. guy – well, hold on, was he, you're, exactly. Was he not the guy? I think it was on ESPN, right? Where And they give us no love. He was one of the guys that was picked by a guy on ESPN, and he was supposed to have a breakout season. He said, this guy Mims, yep. right, in New York, he's going to have a breakout season this year. He's going to catch a lot of footballs. We talked about Corey Davis. We talked about – I mean, they talked about everybody. Corey Davis, the addition to Keelan Cole. Ooh, they got Elijah Moore in the second round. What a steal. Guess what? You better look out for Denzel Mims. Because he's going to benefit from all that stuff. And he benefited all right because the, the, the rest of that bench is pretty clean and easy over there in that wide receiver spot. So he can, you know, slide a sleeping bag under there, you know what I'm saying, get some good Z's while everybody else is on the field playing. He gets to yeah, kind of hang out be his own world the, over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's going to be underneath the training the training uh, tent. That When people get hurt and they put a little tent up, he's going to be in there, under there getting some shade. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So that's what's benefiting him because we ain't seen him. You know, we don't see him in the game much at all, at all. So at all. you that can't tell me Jeff play. Smith is better than Denzel Mims. They can't uh, – I know they think some fans are stupid, but you can't fool me. Jeff Smith, the former quarterback, is not better than Denzel Mims. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Listen, Brad, I hear you. So my final question before I let you go, Brandon, because you're bringing the heat so far. Give me your final score prediction for this game, man. Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, all right, let me – I'm going to go 24. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go 24-21 Jets. I'm going to say oh. we squeak it out. Okay, okay. He, he took 
I look at how Tua, I look how. I look how how Miami played them, you know, and we still got to remember at the end of the day that they have a rookie quarterback and they don't have a bunch yeah. of weapons on offense, you know. Mine, I think, uh, I think uh, one of the tight ends are hurt. Um, Don, they Smith don't really have him. any. Yep, they don't really have any wide receivers. That's a, a, a really a real number one or anything like that. So I mean, I, I we we. They they're good on defense, but we still got to remember at, on the, at the same time like they're going to be a heavy run. It's going to be a heavy run game, so it may not even be that high. It's going to be a heavy run game by them, and hopefully we can stop it. Yeah, yeah. Well, Brandon, listen. Yeah. I, I know thank it was the first game, so everybody just had to get some rust off. After, okay, I'm, I'm hoping that that's what it was. That's what I'm hoping as well. But I got to get back to these lines, Brandon. I want to thank you for calling well, in. Let and me say one more I'll... thing, Joe. Go ahead. I'll let you. I'll let you get That's the last word. Go ahead. As you know, I'm the the troll underneath the bridge. So when I call in on Sunday, I want to give a Sam Donald update. I need a da 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 da. All right, you have a good night, man. <laughs> All right, Joe. <laughs> Listen, Brandon calling in. I, you know, I absolutely enjoy talking Jets with him and everybody. Salutes to everybody calling in. Again, 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639. Call in. That is the number. Wherever you're watching me from, if you're on YouTube, please subscribe. Please turn on your notifications as well. Also, please give the stream a thumbs up and share the stream as well with your friends and family. It's always greatly appreciated when you folks do that. And salutes to all the savages in the chat, Angel Reed, Tim Collectibles, BK Trainer, Adrian Gutierrez, Mike D. Salutes to all of all of y'all, man. Everybody that's in there, again, we'll get to y'all. These lines are hot right now. we got to get back to them. <laughs> also, if you want to hit the super chat, please do. Uh, anything that you give to the platform is greatly appreciated. If you don't want to hit the super chat, you just want to hit me in the cash app. No issues there as well. My cash app is at the bottom of the screen and you can go there and, uh, you know, donate to the platform. Anything you give is greatly appreciated. All right. So we're going to keep getting to these lines again. 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. Next, I'm going to my guy, Shaq, man. Shaq, I'm coming directly to you. Salutes to you, Shaq. I want to thank you for calling in tonight. Shaq, give me your thoughts on this upcoming game, New England Patriots, Jets. How concerned are you that this offensive line is not going to be able to block the Patriots front and they're just going to get all over Zach Wilson? Well, George Fan and uh, Greg Monroe still starting. So, you know, <laughs> you know where I, you know my, we know where I stand with this one. No, nah, I'm just okay. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm 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 trying to come oh, I'm trying to come to the season with a with a new leaf, you know, being a a positive guy. You know, okay. I, I really do believe we, we we're making some we're going we're going to make some changes and make some strides, make some strides, you know. We we we're going to fix this t- this Sunday. It might still be a little rough on the o- offensive line, but uh I think I think we we can hold up for Zach Wilson. Okay, okay. Do you think we'll be able to get the running game going? <laughs> I guess not. Man, I, <laughs> man, without 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 Makai, man, and I like Morgan Moses. I like. I'm glad he he should have been starting week one. Don't get me That's started with that one. He should have been yeah. starting week one. Um, honestly. Uh, I don't know because it's Bill Belichick. It's Bill Belichick, Joe. I, I, he Listen. know we're going to try to rely on the run game, and I think he's yeah. going to shut it down. And he's going to force Zach Wilson to pass. Okay. I, I don't. I don't okay. think. I don't think. Think the running game is is going to be still a little stagnant this week, especially okay. so if, because Makai is okay. out and so, we got Softy over there on the left side. So if we got to go to the air. Is my guy Denzel Mims going to be? Catching any footballs this week, or what do you think is going? To, what do you think is going to happen? With him? And are we going to see his usage? Are we going to see his snaps go up in this game? Hey man, like you guys said before, as, as long as he's not in the blue tent catching some shade, the last caller said, and as long as he's not under the bench with a with a sleeping bag, he should be able to catch <laughs> some passes. He should be able to catch some okay. passes. He did, you know. We got to get him in. I didn't. I, I honestly, I didn't know that we didn't have him on the field. I didn't know that. 
I didn't know that. He got I'm like, how do you he how do you not have him on the field knowing that you have you had major injuries? He Yeah, yeah. Like the last caller said, he's better than Jeff Smith. He's better than Braxton Barrows. You know, like, you know, he should be he should be on the field. Give give him some reps. You know, get him used to the game speed, you know, let him get acclimated and, you know, get hot and get warmed up. Yeah, one catch for 40 yards last week. One catch, 40 yards. That's insane. That's insane. Now, going to the defensive exactly. side of the ball, man, you talk about some of the injuries you got there. We got injuries at linebacker. Of course, you know, Joiners, he's going to be out for the season. So, now red wine is starting there at safety. Man. To me, that's the recipe for this double tight end set. Man. To just be- Let's keep it real. I'm keeping it real. We've seen this in the past. Man. How concerned are you about John U. Smith and Hunter Henry going into this game? <sighs> Oh man. Hopefully they hopefully they don't eat out there, man. I, hopefully they do not eat out there, man. They just they just they probably looking at the safeties like 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 wolves looking at raw meat, just ready to right. eat. And I'm like, right. man, Red Wine need to get it together, man. He better have been in the playbook. He better have done something. Something needs right. to change. Because we're, we're – yeah. Ashton is on IR, so he's out another, what, another yeah. week or so? Like, so supposedly – Come on, Supposedly man. he's going to be back either uh, – I heard some people say week three, but week four is when I originally uh, remember that he was supposed to be back. So I don't think he's coming back to either week three or week four is when he's supposed to come back. But, again, even people – listen, and I, I'm not trying to disrespect nobody, but even – Ashton Davis, there's still question marks about him as well. People are acting like, oh, when he yeah. comes back, it's going to save our safety position. Uh, hold on a second. Let me mm-hmm. er, let me, let me hit your pump yeah. the brakes real quick. That guy had, was a big-time yeah. question mark coverage last year, right? So he's coming off yeah. of a year, which was already suspect in coverage, and he was injured that year and has not played until now week four. He's going to have to work himself back into football shape, also learn a brand-new defensive scheme, also magically get better in coverage. Oh, How boy. long do you think that's going to take? Like, I'm just saying, like, that's why when everybody was laughing at me when I was saying, hey, let's try our best to extend Marcus May, and everybody was like, no, we should just let him go. Okay, well, if Marcus May walks after this year, you're about to reset the safety position if Ashton Davis don't show up. Because Joyner is done for the season. Oh, boy. Y'all ready to depend on red wine next year? I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. I ask these questions. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. I was asking everybody, hey, what about Marcus May? I was told I was crazy, but who's crazy now? Just you know smoking man? crack. Stop. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Joe, you know you something, be, Joe? Go ahead. Go ahead, Shaq. You, you I'll let you know something? This, this, our team, we, we, we can't afford injuries because our mm-hmm. team, let's be honest. Let's be real. Let's be real here. We don't have a superstar talent on this team. Let's be real. You can you, we all we all got to admit that injuries cannot mm-hmm. happen. And and it all starts from the guy up top, Mr. Joe Douglas mm-hmm. himself. He's been he's yeah. been okay, but let's, you know, he's been shaky a lot more than than, you know, you know, been good. We don't his, yeah, pick, okay. his picks you have know. him. His picks really don't stay on the stay on the field because they stay hurt. You know, the the pick. Some of the picks got cut. You know, like huh? we got we got to you know we got to try to he got to try to you know pick up the urgency, man, and you know, yeah. and try to take some take a lot more aggressive moves, man, because we got to yeah. you know this team. You know, people still look down on us, and I don't. I don't honestly. Our coaching, we don't have Adam Gay, so honestly, our our coaching to me can save us. That could that's yeah. a start. That's why I said it's a start. This year, I got some positivity. You know, I feel like you know, our deep, we made an adjustment last week. Something we never, we rarely seen within the last four or five years. You know, yeah, we we fought back. Our quarterback is playing well. You know, even with the the, the garbage old line that we had last week. You know, mm-hmm. we 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 showing some type of spark, but you yeah. just got to pick up the urgency in terms of, uh, you know, getting more picks or or making that big splash. You know, a lot of people say don't throw money at a player. You know, sometimes, you know, big splashes, 
you know, helps. It helps. Yeah. You know, there's not, well, nothing, nothing yeah. wrong with that. Yeah. I mean, we'll see. We'll see how he handles the situation coming this off season. Because, you know, we're going to figure out what works and what doesn't with this football team. But, you know, we, we've got a situation coming up for it, I'll tell you what, with the Patriots. And if we do not protect Zach Wilson, you might be looking for another quarterback real soon. You keep getting a hit like that. But <laughs> before I let you go, Shaq, before I let you go, give me your final score prediction for this upcoming game against the Patriots. Who do you think wins? Who do you think loses? Who do you think the score is going to be, my man? I, I actually bet. I actually made a bet. This this is the first time in a long time I made a bet on us. So, you know, I think people should take that in consideration. I think we're going to win the game, last second field goal, 20-17, to 17, zero seconds left. Everybody's celebrating like we won the Super Bowl, but it's just one game, and I think we're going to win it this Sunday. Let's get it. Let's get it, Joe. Let's get it, Joe. Shaq takes the Jets, 20-17. to 17. I respect that, Shaq. Last second field goal, whew, that will be beautiful. Listen, Shaq, I got to get back to these lines, man. You brought I'm, the heat. You brought I'm the call, heat. Next time I have a show, I'm I want to hear from you, bro. I'm calling back in. I'm calling back in Sunday. You will see me Sunday. Let's talk about it. Let's well, talk about it. Sunday. All right. Absolutely, absolutely. So, all right, you have yourself a good night, my friend. You too. Be safe, Mr. Joe. All right, you have a good one. Peace. Listen, Shaq calling in with some heat. We're going to keep getting to these lines again. 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. We're taking all callers. Again, please, if you're on YouTube, please subscribe, turn on your notifications, like the, uh, like, the, like the stream as well. It really helps, you know what I'm saying, with the stream going around. And please share it with your friends and family if you could. So any platform that you're on, please give me a follow. So, Salute to everybody. We're going to keep getting to these lines again. 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. Next, I'm going to my guy, Steve, man. Steve, I'm coming directly to you. Steve, salutes. I want to thank you for calling in tonight, Steve. Steve, give me your thoughts about this upcoming game, Jets, Patriots. How are you feeling about this Jets offense? Do you think they'll be able to come out and start fast? Hey, Joe. Well, first off, it's always great to hear from you, man. Um, I know um, we, we're past the Carolina game, but before we get into the New England game, because I know that's the main topic about tonight, I wanted to give you my thoughts about that game, just really, really quick, just a quick recap of that game, you know. It's I'll tell you quickly, one it's thing. Quick. I know. I'm, I'm sorry, Joe. It's just – let me tell you something. The Jets could have won the game on Sunday against Carolina if the offensive line didn't show up, showed up. Because if the offensive line had showed up in that game, then we wouldn't have won. Because there were some plays that the offense could have made, but unfortunately we just weren't able to execute it. But you know what? The time to move on. So now let's get ready for this game against New England. Yes, you know, the thing is that's one of the key things. We have to start fast against this Patriots team. Because if we don't start fast against this Patriots team, I mean, listen – I know that this is not the same Patriots that they used to be, you know, back when they had Tom Brady and Julian Edelman and Rob Gronkowski and Wes Welker and all of those guys. They're all gone. Some are retired. Some are playing, you know, down in Tampa Bay now. But let me tell you something, though. The thing about this game that is always going to be tough, whether we play New England at home at MetLife or when we play them at Foxborough, you're going up against Bill Belichick, the greatest, one of the greatest coaches in the National Football League. And, and, and the yeah. thing is, though, like, one thing is, Joe, that, that's going to be tough about this game is, now listen, I know that this Patriots team is not the same team that they've always have been in the past, but it is still a divisional game against a divisional team at home. We have a 10-game losing streak against this team. A 10-game losing streak. The last time we beat the Patriots in a regular season game was the was the Ryan Fitzpatrick touchdown pass to Eric Decker in overtime. That was the last time we ever beat the Patriots in a regular season game. Now, looking at this game, the keys to the game are you got to start fast against New England. You really, really have to because if you don't start fast against New England, Belichick is going to find a way – to give the Jets trouble and give Zach Wilson trouble. The offensive line has to protect Zach. 
we, we, we cannot have the performance like we did against Carolina last Sunday because if not, we're going we're gonna to be in trouble. And there has to be a good running game in this game because as you said earlier in the show, Joe, we only had 45 yards of rushing offense, and 45 yards of rushing offense is unacceptable. You've got to fix that. Yeah, so, yeah, you you absolutely do, and uh, like you said as well, uh, you know this offense has got to get start rolling fast. But to me, the defense one of the keys to the game on the defense is listen. This defense has got to get after Mac Jones. They can't sit back and let him have forty minutes to throw the football like we did against Sam Darnold. That cannot happen. We've got to get in this guy's face early and often and bang him around as well. So listen, Steve, you're bringing the fire right now. So my final question before I let you go, man, is uh. What is your final score prediction for this game? Well, before I give you my final score prediction, I just wanted to talk about the, the defensive side of the ball really quickly. Because, listen, mm-hmm. this is going to be the first game that the Jets are going to have at home this year in front of MetLife Stadium. And, Met, and, I, and I'm hoping that now with the, with the new coaching that we have and everything that has changed is that we can get MetLife Stadium to be like our home stadium it, it is supposed to be like yeah. one thing. That's the other thing we got to do in the game. We got to We got to have Mac Jones feel the pressure of a rookie as he is. Cause the thing is, if we don't put the pressure on Mac Jones, he'll have a field day with us. So if I have to give you my final score, Joe, here is the thing. I would like to be wrong about this. It's just the only thing is, is that as of right now, I just think that new England is, still a little bit slightly better than us, okay? Uh, mm-hmm. But I think it is going to be a close game. As of right now, I'm going to say the Patriots will beat us. I am wrong, but we're yeah. going to see what happens Sunday, okay? Yeah, listen. I'm, uh, it is what it is, Steve. I respect it. I respect your taste. Listen, I want to thank you for calling in, Steve. You have yourself a good night, my friend. Good night, Jeff. All right, you have a good one. Listen, Steve calling in. I respect it. We've had a lot of people calling and say, hey, I'm taking the Jets. I'm saying it loud and proud with my chest out. Jets, Jets, Jets. You know, we've also had some people say, hey, I'm taking the pass. You know, so we'll just keep you into these lines. Again, 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. We are taking all callers. Next, I'm going to my guy, Monty, man. Monty, listen. I ain't got nothing but love for Monty, but we absolutely go back and forth 24 hours a day, okay? The guy never stops, but now when he calls in, my alarm goes off. My alarm's going off. I paid hey, my security, Joe. Hey, okay? On hey, time hey, every day. Hey, Joe. Yeah, you're going to need it. Huh? You're going to need it. Yeah, Joe. What? You need it because you, you owe me an apology, sir. You owe me an apology, owe you sir. So I owe you a apology you know, we, for it, we, I mean, we, you were talking about this offensive line and it being better than the Texans and all that and talking about Makai Beckton being this all-pro player. And I tried to tell you, he just, he's just another guy. Like, he's he, he he's okay. <laughs> he's okay. Monty. He's okay. I saw him getting Monty. whooped. I, I saw him getting beat like a bad habit. <laughs> Monty. It was – it's one up. See, What's this is what I'm saying. Monty see one game. This You're is why smoking I smoking crack. Stop. <laughs> he got to stop. Hey. He got to hey. stop. He got to stop. Monty see I one game. You, I told you. I told or you, Or this, this, this. for one sack, he's the worst tackle in the league. That's how it works with Monty. Makai get beat for one sack, he's the worst tackle in the league. Never mind what he did it last did. year. The best offensive line he had. It, it, got it damn sure, it damn sure ain't um, all pro. I, I'm not seeing all pro. All what right, you're all talking right, about, I'm seeing decent. Well, he, okay. And he's well, hurt. He'll be he's out, hurt like he was He'll be out 48 year. weeks. He'll be out 48 yeah, weeks. Yeah, I wish, you know, I wish him nothing but the best. You know, I hope he, you know, has the speed to recover. Recovery, obviously, yeah. man, I want him to – Um, I want to return, you know, uh, be the, the – the dominant um, lineman, like a DeBricker Shaw Ferguson or somebody, I want him to be that yeah. man. I, I I really do, you know. Like I, but you know, uh, to be honest, yo, I just I just don't see that. I, man, we're used to having good line. We're we're used to having good linemen, man. Like we've seen oh, Nick Mango. We seen we seen DeBricker Shaw Ferguson. Oh yeah, man. we had them at yeah, Star Wars Star Wars for for years, man. So we know we know how it is just to be in the elite. Lyman at the top of your game each and every single year. 
And you know, I just don't, I just don't see the consistency from uh, Makai Beckton. Sometimes I see it, I, I see the flashes, and then you know, other times it's like, bro, like, I, like what's going on? And then the fact that he's just so injury prone too, it's just, I don't know. But, okay, you know, see. look, let, let, let let's talk about this week because again, he's out for the eight weeks. I've seen the consistency. I think he's yeah. good, but he's yeah. just yeah. Yeah. I will admit, you know, he does, he does get dinged up. He had an issue kind of staying on the field last year as well, missing plays. But when you look at what we yeah. have now in front of us, uh, like you talked about, this offensive line is going up against a Patriots pass rush that's ferocious. And for me, mm-hmm. a big part of the game is going to be getting the run game going early. Do you think the Jets will be able to effectively do that? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> if, we couldn't get, if we couldn't get the job done against, you know, Carolina, and not saying that Carolina scrubs or anything. You know, they have some players on that side. But you got to realize mm-hmm. the coaching, coach the 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 coach that Bill Belichick is. He knows what you're going to do and what you want to do, and he has mm-hmm. guys who are going to be disciplined in their gaps, disciplined in their rush, and mm-hmm. they and, and and Robert Sala. He's a he's a he's a first year head coach, so that's what you're going against as well. You know, it's it's just you know Bill Belichick is just so well prepared and. Uh, I think this is gonna be it's gonna be a really really rough day for the Jets, man. I don't think we're gonna be be able to get anything going on the ground. We weren't able to get anything going last week, and uh, I, I just can't see it. Yeah, do you think we'll see uh, Elijah Moore actually make you know some more plays than he made last year or, do, or last week? And do you expect him to kind of clean up those drops? Uh, yeah, I expect him. I think it's you know that was his first game. That was his first game, and. Uh, you know, you saw you saw some of the talent uh, there. I saw uh, on Twitter um, he was able to. Actually, we actually could have got a touchdown. He was uh, he was going past Jeremy Chen, uh, and yeah. uh, we just didn't get the ball to him. So I think yeah. I think you know he he's he's definitely a player. He just has to really just focus and hone hone in on the skills and kind of get get through that 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 those rookie jitters. If that makes sense, but mm-hmm. this was going to be this week is going to be a tall task because, um, um, you know they got they got some good corners, Jalen Mills and uh, J C Jackson. They're really good man corners, and uh, over the top they have uh, Devin McCourty, and uh, yep. he's super dude. He's a high level he's a high level safety who who rarely makes mistakes. So, you know, uh, you know Elijah Moore is going to have his uh, work cut cut out for him this week, but we'll we'll yeah. see. I think he'll make some plays, but I don't think he's going to be. I don't think he's gonna be, uh, you know, a, a huge factor. I just want to see him progress, though. I want to see him progress and, and, and make some plays to kind of get his confidence up, because you know, mm-hmm. as, as a rookie, that's something that you need, man. Yeah, yeah. So my final question for you, Quentin Williams, defensively. Mm-hmm. Listen, Quentin, do you expect him to have disruption this week? Because last week I was looking for it, nothing. This week I need to see him get volatile in there. I need to see. Things guys being thrown around. I need to see him put it together and get some pressure. Are you expecting that? No, <laughs> no, man. Like, no. He's he's come on. He's 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 not the player. He's not the player that we thought. He's 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 not the player that we thought he was, man. And I tried to tell you, Joe. I tried to tell you, um, yeah. he was going to be hampered by by the the, the off season injury. You know, that's the big yeah. thing, a 300-pound lineman not being able to work out and, you know, um, you know, really work on his skills in the off season. He was recovering the whole time. So how is he going to get better if, you know, if he can't walk? And, you know, yeah. sometimes you also have to play your – you got to play your way in shape as well. So I knew this was going to be like a throwaway year for him. And I knew once I saw that injury, I was like, oh, man, it's, it's, it's just a wash. It's going to be a wash. Yeah. But – you know, yeah. uh, it, and then going against the Patriots as well. Like their uh, their interior line is 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 really good, and um, mm-hmm. I think Mac Jones is a really good quarterback, and he he's going to be able to get the ball out quickly. And uh, I I just man, I hate being this down on my team, Joe. But man, I'm, I, I wasn't falling score. for the banana. Yeah, I, uh, score prediction. Uh, man, I think it's going to be like thirty-five to. 14, man. 
Wow, my! You think we get blown away like that? And yeah, I, I, I think, I think it's not even about the players. Really. I think it's more so about oh, coaching. Thirty-five, fourteen. Man. Coach, it's, Go ahead. it's, it's, it's about, about coaching, coaching, man. We saw it. We saw it last week, Joe. We saw we saw Robert Sala get get out coached in that first in that first half, man. And even I mean, three basically three 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 and a half quarters. We saw him get out coached. You know, and you know you're going to get Bill Belichick, and once he sees things on 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 film, man, it's it's, it's going to be a wrap for him. Yeah, yeah. Listen, Monty, I want to thank you for calling in, man. You bring the heat as usual. These lines, are yeah. Hot. You know, I we told you I was going to call, man. I told you I was going to call <laughs> in, man. After that I, game. I was, so- yeah, we go back and forth all the time. Listen, I want you to have a good night, my friend. Next time I have a show, I want to hear from you, Monty. All right? You do the same. Hey, Joe, I got a quick question. So you're doing? Are you doing streams right after? Right after the game? Yeah. So so uh, this week is going to be tough because I don't I don't think I, I'm not going to be able to do a stream after the game. But um, usually okay. uh, I'll announce it um, when I can. I'll definitely tell you guys on the show. So if I can, because you know okay. my schedule is crazy. But we'll so we watch yeah. the show together. We'll, of course, we do a show be- way before the, the game. Then we watch the game together. Then directly after, we do we go straight into a live stream or straight into a live radio. Show. So we stream, we okay. watch the game together, and then I boom, I adjust. We go straight into a live radio show, and that's when yeah. you know we got everybody. It's it's mayhem. You've seen it, <laughs> <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? So it is what it right. is. But yeah. So you, I watch. So when I watch the game with y'all, we doing a live radio show right after the game, like directly after. So okay, yep. okay, oh, all right. Well, Monty, right, man, I'll talk to you. Good. All right, have a good All one. right. Listen, listen, we're going to keep getting to these lines again. 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. Salute to everyone that is. I'm going to my guy, Colin, next. Colin, Colin, Colin. I want to thank you for calling in tonight. Listen, Colin, give me your thoughts about this upcoming Jets game against the New England Patriots, man. How are you feeling about it? Do you think this Jets defense will be able to deal with this Patriots, you know, John New Smith and Hunter Henry. Are you concerned about this double tight end set that they're going to be bringing to the party? Hey, Joe. Um, What's going good on? Good evening, buddy. Um, Blue, that's man. good. I haven't mm-hmm. called in in a while. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I'm not I'm not going to talk much. I'm just going to, you know, the, the Monty before me said a lot of things that I agree with. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I – you know, this, this team is a new team. It's a rebuilding team, and that's what we have to remember, right? This, this team is rebuilding. Yep. Salah is a, is a, you know, he's a defensive coach, you know, first-time head coach. You got rookie offensive coordinators, a bunch of rookie guys, a bunch of fresh new faces. So, um, you know, last week, last week against Sam Donald, I, you know, I already had them as a as an L for that game. Mm. Um and this week as well, you know, I I have them losing to the Patriots. I just I just can't see how they bounce back from such a terrible first half game from last week and you know come out and all of a sudden look like a completely new team. So um, I think it's going to take some time for the for the team to really like gel. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm giving I'm giving them one win before the bye week, so I'm giving them like a one and four. You know, Ooh, the bye okay. week, yeah, okay. and then you know, after the bye week, you know, maybe things. You know, by then things better better start looking good. I mean, if things mm-hmm. are not looking good by then, then we really have issues, yeah. right? Um, so, so yeah, when you look at this, um, game, so when you look at this game, and this is yeah. gonna be the last question I ask you because I know you said you know you talk quickly and and you agree with a lot of things. Do you think our offensive line is gonna struggle in this game? Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I think they're still okay. trying to figure out, like, I think they're still trying to figure out, like, who, you know, who's going to really be, like, what roles. I mean, right now it seems like we can't decide on who our our main running back is going to be, right? We have we have so many guys, and I feel like we're just, like, trying out guys right now. Um, yeah. You know, we, we had we had, um, we had Josh Adams. Like, I, I actually liked him, like, from just watching him in yeah. the preseason. Um, yeah. So there were guys that we didn't keep in, like, you know, like some guys are saying, you know, with Tevin Coleman, I feel like, you know, because he's a ex-49ers guy, you know, mm-hmm. maybe Salah feels like he needs to get him involved. Um, mm-hmm. But there's a lot of guys there, man. You know, yeah. Ty Johnson yeah. is like 
to me, Ty Johnson should just be the number one guy, the guy that gets, you know, 20 exactly. plus carries a game. Um, yeah, I'm right there. And then Denzel, I, Denzel I, I, Mims, I, I, I'm like, you know, yeah. Go, go ahead. Denzel and with Denzel Mims, Mims like, what, what's, yeah, like, what, what's going on with Joe Douglas picks? You know, I'm, I'm getting a little worried now. You know, we picked yeah. a guy in the second, you know, second run last year, and you know, he's not even playing. Comes in for one play. Like, yeah. you know, what's going on there? So, um, yeah, yeah, I, so I, I don't see how how they can beat the Patriots. Um, you what know, they're, they're a good team. Uh, I will probably go twenty three seventeen Patriots. Okay. Yeah. I'm Thank you. I'll, I'll take it. I'm, I'm being I'm I'll being try. I'm being realistic. I'm not I'm not I'm not um yeah, I'm not going to like have my emotions too high for this team. Um until I actually start seeing, you know, like they're playing like a team that's gonna win. Yeah. Yeah. Look, yeah. I respect that, Colin. I hear you. I hear your take. Listen, I wanna thank you for calling in, man. It's been phenomenal to speak to you. I got to get back to these lines. You have yourself a good night, all right? Yeah, good luck, sir. Yeah. Listen, Colin calling in. I respect everybody's takes, all right? We've had a lot of people call in and say, hey, I'm taking the Jets. And we've had a lot of people call in and say, listen, I'm keeping it real. This Patriots team is, you know, they're just better than us right now, and we're going to take the loss. You know, so we're going to keep getting to these lines again. 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. Next, I'm going to my guy, Rusty, man. Rusty, salutes to you. I want to thank you for calling in tonight, my friend. Rusty, give me your thoughts about this this upcoming game against the Patriots, man. Do you think this New York Jets defense will be able to get after Mac Jones? How's it going, Joe and Savages? Um, I, I think we do. I mean, <clears throat> Joe. Uh, Joe uh, Bill Belichick is only so great without Brady, number one. But number two, yeah, he's got that defense wrapped around his finger. And mm-hmm. he, he if if our guys can't adapt to those simple stunts, like everyone else was saying, too, it's, nope. it's not going to be a good outcome. You know, like I feel yep. bad for Zach if, if it comes at him again. But if we've seen anything, you know, from that second half, I hope it just – keep stacking, you know, I keep eating the elephant one piece at a time, eventually eat a whole elephant. And I I just hope it's not a, like a shellacking, like how Bill Belichick has done before. But at the same token too, they got a rookie quarterback. So, you know, they could say all they want and the Jets can bait them too. We still have Mosley. We still have May, you know, Hall Mm -hmm. has been stepping it up. He, he basically, I think allowed like one catch. And, yeah. you know, he, he showed a shutdown. He's no Revis, but, you know, then again, who really is? So, and yeah. that includes everybody in the NFL. Yeah. But, How concerned yeah, are I mean, you? When, we look, when you look at our defense, though, Rusty, we got a lot of injuries, man. You know, our linebacking core has been eating up. Cashman's on, I think he's on IR again. Now he's hurt again. He's not playing Sherwood. He's looking doubtful. He's dealing with the injury. So now we sign this guy, BJ, uh, BJ Goodson. It's looked like he's actually going to play. You know, so some pretty solid snaps. How concerned are you that they're going to come out in that double tight end set, or even come out with some of their running backs that catch the ball out of the backfield and just eat us up that way offensively? Yeah, that's what I was thinking about too. I, I just hope they return red wine back to the liquor store. No more boxed wine. Get like somebody named Tequila or something. Uh, I, I, I can't. I can't. But you know, it is what it is. Yeah. That poor guy that was a smoked good, lives. That was a good one. <laughs> Rusty, Rusty, bro. Rusty really, you know, he be coming with it. I respect that. I respect that. So my, my final <sighs> question for you, Rusty, is when you look at us, uh, when, you, when you look at us uh, defensively as well, because we talked about, you know, the injuries there. You talked about red wine, <laughs> him getting cooked. When you look at our front, man, are you are you ready for Quentin Williams to do something? Is this the week where we see massive disruption up front leading from Quentin Williams? Do you think that this is the game that he'll start to dominate as he continues to roll through the season? He better stop being baby Huey. It's driving me insane. <laughs> like the, I think it was Monty who said it too before. 
Like, yeah. last year he stepped it up. When we first got him, you know, he was just running around doing whatever. But mm-hmm. I, I, he had such – they had, like, Aaron Donald expectations for him, which I didn't see in college. I was, you know, I was looking for Allen, the other Josh mm-hmm. Allen, you know, hoping to get. Yeah. But, you know, he, after last year, I was like, all right, I'll eat some humble pie. But I, yeah. I don't know. Like, what did he see, Sam's ghost or something? Because I didn't see him. I did not see him on Sunday, and I don't know how the hell they had those stats where he had like six pressures or something like that. I yeah. I don't know. I don't know what they were all seeing, but I didn't see it. It was yeah. uh, you know, it's a little disheartening. But yeah, if he could step his game up and be who he was mm-hmm. the la- you know last year, that'd be mm-hmm. terrific. And for yeah. God's sakes, play Mims. I am. <laughs> pulling my hair out about that and it, it takes everything out of me and just not to curse and I respect you so I won't but oh man thank you so much it, it, I'm telling you it, it's driven it's driven a lot of Jets fans to curse and I already know okay because I had questions as well we uh, we watched the game together and one of the things that I said where the heck is Mims and then he finally got one yeah. catch for the 40 yards and then he was right back on the bench and it was like what is going oh. on out here and again Sola comes out and says hey he doesn't know all the positions. It's like, dude, well, just tell him what the route is or figure out a way, you know, to get him out there on the field. This is just, just completely ridiculous. That's, but his, Rusty, that's so ass. That's, his, that's ridiculous because Zach is the only one that knows all the players. So, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. Turn into the Mad Hatter again. So, <laughs> give, give me your final score prediction, Rusty. <laughs> What's your final score prediction for the game, man? Oh, I hate this part of the game. Uh, I don't know. I. If if we do right and play like we did in the second half of last week, yeah. I see it yeah. being around, you know, 23-13 or 23-17 off. If it's okay. anywhere close to that first half, Jesus. I, I, I said to say it would probably be like 28-17 or something. So what, but what I'm leaning around? towards, you know, the 23-13 more set because that's what I saw when we left off. You know, that's how we finished. So, so 2013 uh-oh. what? 2013 Jets or 2013? Jets. Yeah. Oh, 2313. If, okay. if we if yeah. we if we keep that Jets. speed up from the second half, so yeah, yeah. Listen, Rusty, I gotta get back to these lines. I want to thank you for calling in. Next time I have a show, I want to hear from you. All right, my friend. Absolutely, too, Joey. Take it easy and take it easy, savages. All right, you have a good one. Salute. Listen, we're going to keep getting to these lines again. 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in wherever you're watching me from. Please give the stream a follow. Please subscribe if you're on YouTube. Turn on your notifications so when I post content, you folks will be in the know. Also, give the stream a thumbs up if you can. And also, share the stream as well with your friends and family. It's always greatly appreciated. You know, it helps the stream out. If you'd like to give to the Super Chat, please do. Anything you donate to the platform is greatly appreciated. Also, if you want to hit me in the Cash App, you can do that as well if you don't want to get to the Super Chat. The Cash App is open. Anything you get to the platform, again, is greatly appreciated. So we're going to keep getting back to these lines. Next, I'm going to my guy, Maxwell. Maxwell, salutes. I'm going to thank you for calling in tonight. Maxwell, give me your thoughts about this New York Jets upcoming game against the Patriots. What are your expectations for Zach Wilson in this game? I think Zach Wilson needs to play better in this game. Uh, Zach Wilson didn't play the best in his first game. Even though the Carolina defense, I think, is going to be top ten this year in the NFL, six sacks is just Mm -hmm. unacceptable for the O-line, and the O-line needs to step it up big time. I understand yeah. Mike McFlore, like even though he was he was not the best offensive coordinator, it was his first game. Everyone's just overreacting. Everyone's like, oh, Mike McFlore is such a bad offensive coordinator. But having Adam Gates and Dow Logan for two years is way worse than having Mike McFlore. I mean, he's a new OC. In two years, yeah. he's going to get a coaching job. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, look, I, I respect that. I respect that. You know, I He's got to clean some things up. I think a lot of the motioning early got us a lot of penalties and flags. He's got to kind of settle things down. But for me, a big part of the game, Maxwell, is our running game getting going. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think we'll effectively be able to run against the Patriots? I think we might be. Even though Patriots' defense is good, uh, I think our running game needs to get better. Uh, I think we should sign Alejandro Villanueva because um, he might uh, the, the, the tackle uh, – Oh, yeah, Mackay Beckton might be out for, like, the entire season. So, Alejandro, if he gets surgery, so Alejandro and Maleva might be a good offensive tackle. Yeah, I mean, Beckton is out for four to eight weeks. We'll see what happens. 
uh, going forward with that. But there, like, I mean, they're going to have Fent on that left side, Morgan Moses on the right side. This offensive line needs to gel and clean things up uh, very, very quickly. What are your thoughts about our pass rush? Do you think we'll be able to get after Mac Jones? I think we should because Mac Jones, yeah, I think our pass rush is going to get, like, uh, maybe, like, two, three sacks. The reason is mm-hmm. Mac Jones isn't that good. Everyone just overhyped him. He throws, like, 10-yard slant pass. That doesn't make so he's so good. Yeah, because he's throwing 10-yard slant passes, which are easy. Zach Wilson is literally a better quarterback than Mac Jones. I think that the Jets are winning 28-24. Zach Wilson gets his first win. Ooh, okay. Maxwell says 28-24 Jets salutes. Listen, Max, I got to get back to these lines, man. You have yourself a good night, all right? Okay. All right, listen. He called in with the fire, quick fire. He was bringing it. He said he's taking the Jets. Salutes to him. We're going to keep getting to these lines again, 515-602-9639. 515-602-9639 is the number. Call in. Next, I'm going to my guy. It looks like 111 calling in from Skype. Salute, salute, salute. I want to thank you for calling in tonight. You're looking like a new caller. Give me your name, where you're from, and give me your thoughts on this uh, Jets game against the Patriots. Well, let me tell you, Joe, it is, I am back, you know, oh. it is Val Outlaw. It is, hold on, Listen. Val, hold on, for those Listen. of you that don't know. Val! Listen. Listen, Val is a savage. Val, salute, salute, salute. Give me Listen. your thoughts, man. What's up, man? <laughs> All right, can I, can I please talk about that last game? Just real quick. Just real quick. Go ahead. Go ahead. Give All right, shake. man. We could have won that game if we would have just yeah. got to Sam Donald. All we had to do was bring pressure. The thing yeah. was we started so late. It was the third quarter we finally touched um, Sam Donald. His jersey just got dirty. So it was just like, <laughs> man. We could have at least did something, and I was going off in your chat. I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure you've yeah. seen it. I'm like, where yeah. is Denzel Mims? Where is yeah. he at? That's our that's our mini um AJ Green. We needed him, mm-hmm. and as soon as he came in, he was an automatic threat. Because remember, last year he was getting double teamed, and this is a rookie. Yeah. Nobody knew yeah. who he was, so he was getting double teamed, and then you had Corey Davis. Corey Davis, yeah. Denzel Mims, both together. Oh, my God. We could have won the game. We really could have yeah. won the game. I was so – I was mad, man. And yeah, fact, it's, yeah. it's, even in that game, we, we struggled to get to the passer, right, and we also struggled yep. to block up front. Even when you talk about coming into this game against the Patriots, that's my question is, do you think this offensive line will be able to block this Patriots front? Because, again, everybody's just, like, ho-humming it. And I'm saying, hey, listen, they're coming with Judon, uh, Dante Hightower. They got – they got Hightower. You know, oh, you, these are dudes to get after it, bro. <laughs> like, you uh, thought the past, I mean, that was tough for Tom Rich and, and Burns this week. It's like, bro, come on. I mean, what are your thoughts? Will they right. get guys blocked, especially with the shuffling up front with Beckton going out? Right, right. See, this is the thing. We went against the Patriots last year. We was kind of struggling with, you know, the sacks and stuff like that. And Hightower yeah. and all, a lot of players wasn't there last year. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's going to be hard. Trust me. This is not, something not to go past, to brush past and stuff like that. We have to protect yeah. Zach Wilson. If the, if the Panthers was doing that, I know the Panthers' defensive line, listen, we're not going to catch no breaks this game at all. So, we, they got to come up with a game plan to get the ball out of Zach Wilson's um, hand as fast as possible. The run game has mm-hmm. to be a lot more stronger. But it's it's not going to be an easy game whatsoever. I'm, I'm telling you that from the jump. But yeah. we have to get to the quarterback. That's the problem. And to be honest, I've just seen the Arizona game. I, I'm, I'm thinking we should have just traded for Chandler, man, because that man was killing it. <laughs> we needed something like that. <laughs> but well, yeah. all this yeah. is, yeah, man. I, and, and this is my problem with Makai Beckton. Let me touch on that real quick. I always said Makai Beckton, he's always, you know, he has that injury. He's coming off like he has that injury bug about him. And I'm mm. like, we need a solid left tackle. And that's what I've always yeah. been questioning. I was like, we have to get 
somebody in there just in case something had happened, and it just sucks yeah. that it happened in the first game, you know. But hopefully a speedy yeah. recovery for him and stuff. But the offensive line has to get better. And, you know, yeah. this is a new group, so hopefully the connection comes together, and, you know, and chemistry starts to grow. Because like you said, this yeah. is a rebuild team. So, and – I would say, you know, everybody has to kind of relax as well, too. You know, this is the first, you know, the first game, you know, and this is like the um, this is a new team, so to say. You know what I'm saying? This is a new regime. This is new coaching mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So, you know, they did good. I, I, to be honest with you, that first game, Zach Wilson definitely handled himself very well. I would give him that. He definitely did. Yep. I'm, not giving, I'm, I'm not giving him the keys to the franchise. No, I'm not doing that yet until he shows me and proves to me that he's the guy. But he handled himself very well, and I think I thought he did get a concussion going off of what you said, Joe. That's a fact, bro. When he slept, when that, when his head bounced off the ground, Sheesh. I was like, oh. When he got up and he I got was, up so slow, I was like, bro, he's done. <laughs> I know. I, I thought he was like, done. Bro. I thought he was done. I, I was like, oh, my dude. God. This is bad. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this is our, so, so my this final, is our investment right final, now. Yeah, exactly. My final question for you, Val, because you bring in the heat, bro, as usual. You look at this, the injuries that we have. We were talking about defense getting after the passer, but my concern as well is you look at last game, we struggled with what? Running backs coming out the backfield, catching the football, right, running their routes. Mm-hmm. This week we're going, up against, we're going up against a Patriots team that can do that. With White and Harris, they can both do that. But they also got that double tight end set, John U. Smith and, uh, and, and Hunter Henry. Our linebacking core is ate up with injuries, and we're missing Joyner, who's done for the season. So red line's going to be out there. Do you think that we're going to be prepared for the Patriots' passing attack, or could you see us just getting abused from that standpoint as well defensively? Listen, this all comes down to if we're going to get to the quarterback. That's the problem. We cannot have him just sit back there and just chilling for like 30 seconds or, you know, yeah. just 30 minutes and just relaxing and just passing the ball. We have to take the yeah. pressure off of the um the linebackers, and that's how that's what's, what's going to end up happening. And yeah, they mm-hmm. might you know they might kill us because I, I really don't. To be honest, I'm not too educated on who's the backups and stuff like that on the, the linebacker core. But I'm just saying, mm-hmm. like you know, it's not looking good right now. You know, the injury we yeah, are getting mean, right. hit with the injury bugs. Yeah, I mean, right now, you know, yeah, because you were talking about linebackers. Right now, Sherwood dealing with injury. He's doubtful for this game. I don't think he's going to play. We just got B.J. Goodson in, who's a guy that I believe used to play for the Browns. We signed him, just brought him Mm -hmm. in. He's probably going to play some significant snaps. Because, uh, I mean, he's, uh, we'll see what he does, but he's kind of, especially if you watch him last year, he's kind of up and down, all right? But uh, Jared uh, yeah. Davis, we all know he's the Cashman again is hurt again. He's going to be missing time. I think he's on the oh, IR. Man. So now you got Nestle G, CJ Mosley, Quincy Williams. I mean, dude, it's 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 all over the place. It's all over the place. So this oh, linebacker man. core, we got to clean it up and get it together. But give me your final score prediction, Val. Fifty-eight and zero. Jets got this. No joking. All right, all right. Um, I say. 24-27, I got the Jets winning the game. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Listen, Val, it's to. always great to speak to you, bro. Always great to speak to and you. Pay I want to hear from Denzel you more often. Denzel Mims. I mean, I mean, not pay Denzel Mims. <laughs> pay pay Mark- um, Marcus May. We need Marcus May. Time. I do not want no safety problems no more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks sorry, for calling in, Val. You good, yeah, you have yourself a good one, man. <laughs> All right, no doubt, Joe. Hey, everybody hit and like, subscribe to that that man, um, Joe, man, and keep doing your thing, Joe. I'm gonna keep watching. Absolutely, thank you so much, Val. It's always great to speak to you, yes, man. Sir. You have a good one. All right, man. Hey, listen, Val. Salute. <laughs> Listen, listen, listen. This has been a crazy show. We've had so much going on, so many callers. I want to thank everybody for calling in, everybody coming in, hot takes. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love connecting with with Jets fans. I love connecting with football fans, period, and be able to discuss this football team and kind of, you know, just look at things, how how we're looking from different vantage points, see how things work. So we're going to go to the the chat real quick, to the savages. Salutes to Jonathan Stone. Jonathan Stone says, 
hey, Joe, what's happening, dude? I thought that Wilson was average, not good, but average last week, and I'm curious how he'll do against Bilicek in the past this Sunday. You know, I honestly, salute to you again, Jonathan. It's good to see you in here. I thought that Wilson played very well under the circumstances. Um, he had a lot of pass rush down, you know, coming straight at him, a lot of issues, and we saw him, you know, stand in there, take some shots, and be able to deliver some throws. Did he hold on to the ball a little bit too much at times? Eh, yeah, but uh, there's still, you know, he was still able to make some quality throws. Now, here's the deal. He was also uh, evading pressure, getting away from pressure, and some of the throws he was trying to make were drops, right? We saw Elijah Moore drop two critical ones coming across the middle, hit him right in his hands, he dropped it. Then the other one literally went right through his arms, he dropped that one too. So those are plays that the wide receivers, uh, you know, Elijah Moore and other guys as well, have to make for him too. But just everything that we saw out of him, man, the movement, the ability to keep his eyes down the field, even when guys are right in his face, uh, being able to take a shot, get right back up. He played very, very solidly last week. And I think that, again, upcoming this Patriots week, this is going to be a test too because Bilicek is absolutely going to tee off on him. That's what he's going to do. They're going to try their best to take his head off on a down-to-down basis. They're going to try to take advantage of all the things that we discussed tonight, particularly if our offensive line doesn't step up. We're going to have some big issues, some big issues. Again, Van Noy is going to be out. He's dealing with the injury, but they still got Hightower. They still got Winovich. They still got, you know, Guy. They still got, you know, Henry Anderson is out there as well. They still got some guys that can push the pocket and get after it. Judon, Matt Judon is still out there too. Those are the guys they send after you. So he's going to mix things up. He's going to make Zach feel like certain things are happening and it's not happening. Again, we've seen him in the past make quarterback see ghost. So this is going to be a big test, uh, you know, this upcoming week. And, I see people in the loose all the savages talk about pay May. Pay May. Listen, I tried to tell y'all. You know, what more do you everybody. want from me? I tried to tell everybody. I don't want to grossly overpay him. I don't want to do that. But you look at the safety situation now, everybody's screaming about Ashton Davis like he's going to be the savior of the safety position. He's coming into a situation where he has not played football since, you know, whenever he got hurt last year. He's still trying to recover from this situation. Now he's coming into this year where he's got to get himself together in coverage because he struggled with that last season. He's got to get himself back in the football shape on top of learning a new defensive system. He's got to do all those things. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. we got to see that. I'll tell you what, if, if Ashton Davis does not work out, you see the joiners on the IR already, safety situation is looking real bad if Marcus May walks away. That's all I'm saying. Defensive, you know, he's a team, a team MVP, you know, one of our best defensive players last season. You know, you got to pay to, you know, keep some guys sometimes. Keep your guys. That's all I'm going to say on that. Everyone knows how I feel about Marcus May. But I'm going to go ahead and close out the show. Again, salute to everybody. It's been so fun. Oh, before I go, let me go ahead and give you folks my prediction. It's going to be a tough game, man. It's going to be a really tough game. Oh, man, I see the Jets coming out. I think the shakeup along our offensive line, particularly putting Fant at left tackle. I'm just not impressed with George Fant. Um, I think we'll struggle a little bit. I think they're going to send guys after us. I don't think that Zach Wilson is going to get hit as much as he did against the Panthers, but I definitely think this pass rush of the Patriots is going to get after him. But I think he'll be able to find guys, though. I really do. Um, I think Corey Davis is going to have a day. I really, really do. I think he's going to be, yet again, his go-to target. I think Corey Davis is really going to eat, and I think he's going to continue to show people that, uh, you know, he's here. <laughs> and he's the guy that, you know, the, the New York Jets needed to make sure that they signed a free agency. I'm very concerned about our defensive line, particularly our pass rush. Uh, listen, John Franklin Myers, Huff, these guys got to step up, and they got to step up early, okay? I don't want to see no wait to the second half to try to do something. No, you wait to the second half against the Patriots, they're going to they gonna finish you, all right? You got to get some pass rush immediately. Get going. Get going fast, all right? Quentin Williams, he needs to step up as well. I need to see something out of Quentin Williams. I really, really do. Our cornerback situation, I like Hall. I like what he's shown. I think he's going to be solid. It's the other side I'm a little bit worried about, depending on who's over there. You know what I'm saying? Rather, Because I know sometimes they put a Gundry over there. They put Echoes over there. That Those guys are definitely going to be tested. I'm a little concerned about our safety position, too. Red Wine has got to be a guy that steps up this week. He cannot continue to get cooked like we saw last week. And I think Sulla has got his hands full because this is going to be a challenge coaching up against you know, Bill Belichick. I wouldn't be surprised if he does get out coaching in his football game. 
you know, and especially when you look at our cornerback situation again, some of the situations you have there, it's looking like Isaiah Dunn is questionable as well. We'll see if he actually plays too. That could add another factor in too with the depth of the cornerback position. Because again, these Patriots wide receivers don't necessarily scare me, but they're still guys that can go out there and make plays. I'm worried about this double tight end set defensively too. Henry, Johnu Smith. I'm also worried about these backs coming out the backfield. We have struggled to cover Patriots backs coming out the backfield for years. I'm telling you, they've always been able to. James White, Damian Harrison, all those guys, man, have always been able to eat, man. So I'm I'm just worried. I'm just worried. So it's tough, but I'm not going to take the Jets in this game. I'm not. I'm going to take the New England Patriots to win this football game. 20-14, 20-14, 20 to 14, 20 to 14, I'm taking the Patriots. 20 to 14, I hit myself, you know. Salutes to the in-studio in, in, in trumpet player. I hit myself. So I'm taking a pass again, 20 to 14. I think they take it. So I'm going to go ahead and close out the show. Salutes to everyone. I want to thank everyone again for calling in. You folks are the greatest. Listen, I am the man of the people. I'm here for the people. Let me shamelessly promote my Facebook page. Everyone go on Facebook, search The Long Beach Joe Show. Like that page and also uh, make content, my content's up there as well. Please give it a listen. Message me, I'll message you right back. I love going back and forth with folks about this football team. Also leave me some feedback. I love hearing about what you folks think I do here on The Long Beach Joe Show. I'm also on Twitter as well at YoungJ000. Again, that is YoungJ000. Okay, follow me, I'll follow you right back. You want to troll me, no issues. I'm the troll that lives under the bridge, and I will have my Vera Tucker jersey on at all times. At all times. This offensive line has got to step up. You know what I'm saying? But I still got that Vera Tucker jersey on at all times. So I'm also on YouTube as well. YouTube is Long Beach Joe Jets. Long Beach Joe Jets on YouTube. If you want to troll me, go ahead. We can go back and forth in the comments. Please subscribe. Turn on your notifications on that channel, and please give my videos a thumbs up, all right? And, again, turn on your notifications so when I post content, y'all will be in the know. All right? And, as always, people, when you see me in person, it is arms out, chest open, free hugs for everyone. Free hugs for everyone, okay? Free hugs. The hugs will cost you absolutely nothing. Don't let anybody convince you otherwise. The hugs will always remain free. I want to thank everyone for calling in, listening, watching the show, wherever you're watching me from. Without you folks, I am absolutely nothing. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to call in, listen to the show, watch the show, you know, view the show, whatever, wherever you you catch me at. I want to thank you for doing that, telling you you folks are the greatest, the reason why I do the show. So you folks have a good one, all right? Peace. (laughs) 